Hello everyone, so welcome back, we are in the 8th module, so 8th module and this is our first lecture. So, we are now in the discussion of uh, multi degree of freedom system. So, uh, So, first what we will do, we will derive the equation of motion and then um, as we did in case of SDF system, we will uh, one by one solve different cases and we will also solve some MATLAB example. Now, so for the equation of motion is concerned, if you recall, we have um, derived Lagrange equation. Right. So, what was that? If you recall, so this is the Lagrange equation, and what is Q k? Q k is the generalized. coordinate. Right. Now, we also define what is Lagrangian that is T minus V. Now, with that background, let us consider an example. Now, if we have say a two storied structure. So, there are two stories. So, the first one has mass m 1 and the second one is having mass m 2 and the first story column stiffness is uh, k 1 and the damping is quantified by c 1. Similarly, when we go up the next story is having uh, k 2 as lateral stiffness and c 2 as the damping mm, coefficient. Now, obviously, again before I move forward, uh, this k 1 and k 2, they are the total stiffness offered by the each stories in the horizontal direction and uh, we also define x 1 of t and then x 2 of t and also there can be force f 1 t and f 2 t acting at the two different levels. Now, if this is the structure, our task is to find out the equation of motion and you know by now already you have discussed also in case of uh, single degree of freedom system that we convert this system into an equivalent mass spring dashboard, right. So, what we have here, uh, the first story is idealized by this uh, SDF system that we have already studied in detail and then now we have one more additional that means another unit will come here and that is how we will develop, we will build the complete system within the same framework that we have already discussed, right. So, this is the idealization of the same uh, structure we have drawn on the left hand side. So, we have k 1, c 1, k 2, c 2, m 2 and then we have x 1 and x 2. So, what is our q k? This is x 1, x 2, right. Now, for this system, uh, let us consider free vibration and that is the reason I have not considered f 1, f 2 for the time being, we will add it as we progress. Now, for the time being, uh, the two of system we have, we can write down the kinetic energy and potential energy. 
So, what is the kinetic energy? It is half m1 x1 dot square plus half m2 x2 dot square. Similarly, we can also write down the potential energy. So, in this case, let us consider the first spring. So, half k1 times the displacement experienced by this spring. So, the first spring uh, having one end anchored at the support and another end is moving by an amount of x1. So, it is half k x1 square plus half for the second story it is k2 and then uh, the effective deformation of that spring. Now, if you look at that spring uh, when you are at the second uh, mass, so its net deformation is x2 minus x1, so square of that quantity. I repeat again, uh, we have two uh, degrees of freedom. So, when we go to the second story, the spring k2 here, it experiences a net deformation of x2 minus x1 when we are at the second story. So, together these two gives us the Lagrangian. So, Lagrangian is equal to T minus V and that is equal to half or oh, let me write down in the next line. So, this is equal to half m1 x1 dot square plus half m2 x2 dot square minus the entire quantity. So, it is half k1 x1 square minus half k2 x2 minus x1 whole square. So, now we will adopt Lagrangian equation and we will first differentiate L with respect to x1 and then repeat the same exercise for x2. So, if we do that do L do x1 dot this quantity let us evaluate first. Obviously, if you look at the expression of L, the first term here is a function of x1 dot. So, if we differentiate this uh, entire expression that represents the Lagrangian. So, what we will have m1 then x1 dot. The simple reason being uh, if we differentiate half m1 x1 dot square with respect to x1 dot. So, this half will get cancelled and then because we differentiate this m1 x1 dot square with res respect to x1 dot. So, we will have this quantity. Now, if we time differentiate this thing. So, we will have this quantity which is obviously m1 x1 double dot. Now, if we partially differentiate L with respect to x1, then obviously the first two term in the Lagrangian will be 0 because they are not function of x1. Then the third term if we differentiate we will have this as minus half will get cancelled because we have to differentiate k, k1 x1 square with respect to x1. So, we will have k1 x1. Then the fourth term in Lagrangian if we differentiate that with respect to x1. So, what we will have minus half will get again cancelled. So, k2 x2 minus x1 and then we have to differentiate x2 minus x1 with respect to x1. So, it will offer minus 1. So, ultimately this will be positive. Now, once we combine these two and then uh, develop the first Lagrangian equation. Then what we will get? We will get m1 x1 double dot minus of this quantity. So, it will be plus k1 x1 minus k2 x2 minus x1 equal to 0. Now, if you simplify, 
this equation what we will have m 1 x 1 double dot plus k 1. So, if we open this first bracket and then take x 1 common, so we will have k 1 plus k 2 into x 1 minus k 2 into x 2 is equal to 0. So, that is the first equation. Similarly, if we differentiate L with respect to x 2 dot, we will have m 1 x 2 dot. Then if we time differentiate this quantity, sorry. So, this will be sorry this will be not m 1 x 2 dot this will be m 2. So, ultimately we will get m 2 x 2 double dot and then again we have to differentiate L with respect to x 2 and then what we will get um, only the fourth term in Lagrangian is a function of x 2. So, we will get minus half will again get cancelled the moment we differentiate. So, we will have uh, k 2 times x 2 minus x 1. So, that is the quantity. Now, if we combine these two and uh, the second Lagrangian equation, if we form, so we will have this is the equation and then what we will have m 2 x 2 double dot. So, we have the second term will be minus of minus uh, k 2 times x 2 minus x 1. So, this will be plus um, k 2 x 2 minus x 1 equal to 0. And then again, if we simplify this equation, we will have m 2 x 2 double dot plus or if you open the bracket, the first term will be minus k 2 x 1 plus k 2 x 2 equal to 0. So, that is the second equation. So, we have 2 degrees of freedom system and we have developed 2 equations of motion. Now, if we combine them and uh, then in a matrix form, so what we will have m 1 0 0 m 2 x 1 double dot and then x 2 double dot. So, that is the first term plus we have k 1 plus k 2 then minus k 2 minus k 2 and then k 2 times x 1 x 2 is equal to So, that is the third equation. So, this is the governing equation of motion. And symbolically, we can write this is m x double dot plus k times x is equal to 0. So, that is the equation of motion for the free vibration of a m dot system. Now, what you can see from this discussion is that once we identify the uh, stiffness and mass uh, of the structure and, and we appropriately quantify them then the moment we uh, identify the building blocks, we can actually quantify what is the kinetic energy and what is the potential energy. And the moment we do that in terms of generalized coordinate, then uh, rest of the uh, mathematics is very straightforward. So, we follow Lagrange equation and then one by one we derive all the equation of motion. The point to be noted here the moment we go for m dot system, here in this case we have only 2 degrees of freedom system. 
then we will have two governing equation of motions and then we can combine them in a matrix form and we get this compact form which is also similar to what we learned in case of S dot system. The only difference is here we have x and x dot both are vector and the coefficient m and k in this equation they are matrix. So, what is the dimension of those matrix? Uh, they are uh, actually n cross n, n is the number of degrees of freedom. In this case we have 2 degrees of freedom, so m and k matrices are 2 cross 2 matrix. So, that is the first takeaway point and you can see how easily we can derive the equation of motion using Lagrange equation. So, if we have any complex structure for that the moment we define what is the um, generalized coordinate and then uh, we can easily solve the problem and find out equation of motion. Now, before we discuss in detail uh, how to solve this system of equations, we let us go back to our old um, style of developing equation of motion. If you recall, during SDOF system what we did, we developed the free body diagram of each and every mass. So, in this case also we uh, let us follow the same steps and let us see whether we derive the same equation of motion or not and then uh, we will move forward. So, for that again uh, let me quickly draw the um, structure. So, we have two units of SDOP system connected together. and then uh, their masses are m1, m2, k1, c1, k2, c2 and x1 and x2 are the generalized coordinates. So, if we draw the free body diagram of the first mass, obviously we have to identify the forces acting. So, the first force we can easily conclude is at the center uh, it will experience uh, inertia. So, that is m 1 x 1 double dot. Then there will be a restoring force because of the spring k 1 on the left side and the damping force um, and then on the right hand side also there is a spring, but before that let us write down the value. So, the left side we have restoring force k 1 times you have x 1 is the deformation of the spring. Similarly, we have c 1 uh, x 1 dot is basically the uh, damping force. Then uh, on the right hand side, we have the moment uh, this uh, mass m 1 tries to deform, it will have uh, restoring force on the right hand side due to the spring uh, k 2 and uh, the force will be k 2 times x 1 minus x 2 for the spring and then uh, for the damper we have c 2 times x 1 dot minus x 2 dot. And if we consider a force acting, so we can identify the force say this is f 1 of t. So, that is the free body diagram of the first mass. Similarly, let us draw the free body diagram of the second mass. So, it is m 2 and then um, at the C g it will experience the inertia similarly uh, to the mass 1 and then there will be uh, restoring force due to spring and the damping force both are acting on the left hand side of the mass. On the right hand side there is only force acting. So, let us uh, draw the force say f 2. So, f 2 f 1. So, this spring force will be k 2 times x 2 minus x 1 and the damping force c 2 x 2 dot minus x 1 dot. The only point to be noted here you see if you uh, consider the free body diagram when you deal with m dot system 
from one spring to another spring if you go you see the deformation you have to consider carefully in one case for first mass we consider it x1 minus x2 which it should be and for the second mass it will be x2 minus x1. Interestingly if you see if you add these two forces up uh, they will cancel each other and keep the uh, system in equilibrium. Now for the first mass if you just um, apply equilibrium equation so summation of say x1 all forces acting along x1 is 0. So, in that case what we have is m1 x1 double dot plus c1 x1 dot plus c2 x1 dot minus x2 dot. So, then we will have stiffness force k1 x1 plus k2 x1 minus x2 is equal to f1. So, if you simplify this we have m1 x1 double dot plus uh, c1 plus c2 x1 dot minus c2 x2 dot plus k1 plus k2 times x1 minus k2 x2 is equal to f1. So, that is the first equation. Similarly, if we consider equilibrium for the second mass, so what we will have m2 x2 double dot plus c2 x2 dot minus x1 dot plus k2 x2 minus x1 is equal to 0. And then again if you simplify this equation we will have m2 x2 double dot minus c2 x1 dot plus c2 x2 dot then again minus k2 x1 plus k2 x2 and on the right hand side uh, if you have a force then it will be f2. So, this is equal to f2 that is the second equation. Now, once we have these two equations then if we can combine we will get the compact form of the equation of motion. So, it will have m1 m2 times x1 double dot x2 double dot plus c1 plus c2 minus c2 <coughs> minus c2 c2 x1 dot x2 dot plus k1 plus k2 minus k2 then next row minus k2 k2 times x1 x2 is equal to f1 f2. So, that is the again if we write it in the symbolic form. So, governing equation of motion is equal to m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x all are capital is equal to f. So, that is the governing equation of motion. And obviously, we also have to define initial conditions. So, initial conditions will be x at 0 is x 0 and then x dot at 0 is equal to x dot 0. And together uh, this equation and the initial conditions gives us the complete set of the governing equation of motion for this system. Now, uh, in the previous case when we used Lagrange equation, uh, 
we considered only free vibration, you can also top up this Lagrangian with the appropriate contribution from the damping force and the external forces also. That is quite possible and I leave that exercise with you all. The only thing is when you consider external force, this Lagrange equation on the right hand side, it will be the force acting at the generalized coordinate q k. So, accordingly you have to modify this equation, but again yeah, you can show that you will get the same equation of motion that we have derived using equilibrium condition. So, in this procedure what we do? We draw the free body diagram for each mass and then once we draw the free body diagram carefully, you have to be very careful while considering the signs then you can derive the same equation of motion. And uh, obviously, for a complex structure, we cannot just draw the free body diagram always, uh, that is at times very difficult. In that case, we have the way out, we can go for Lagrangian equation. So, first find out the Lagrangian and then uh, you uh, differentiate that Lagrangian with respect to general S coordinate. And then obviously, one by one, you will get all the associated governing equation of motion for this system. So, with that background, uh, let us move forward. What uh, uh, the take point is that now, if we have a complex system uh, which we have to model as M of system, then we can easily uh, derive the equation of motion. So, uh, that is not a difficult task. Uh, either uh, of the approach we can adopt uh, whichever way it is convenient for uh, shear building models like frames that we have in case of civil engineering. It is very easy to draw the free body diagram. So, we can easily draw the free body diagram and de develop the equation of motion, but uh, we have a more generalized way using Lagrange equation. So, with that uh, let us move forward. So, we have M of system that is multi degree of freedom system that means more than 1 degrees of freedom we have and as many degrees of freedom we have that many equation of motion we will develop and we have to solve that. Now, uh, for that same uh, system if I again quickly draw the system because we will uh, use this system for the complete analysis and once we do the complete analysis for um, this two of system, then we can easily extend it for multi degree of freedom system with more than two degrees of freedom. So, uh, okay. So that governing equation, if you recall. M 1 0 0 M 2 times x 1 double dot x 2 double dot plus k 1 plus k 2 minus k 2 minus k 2 plus k 2 times x 1 x 2 is equal to 0. Again you notice that we consider um, undamped free vibration. Obviously, we also need uh, initial conditions that means x 0 is equal to x naught and then x dot 0 is x naught x dot naught. Okay. So, that is the initial condition and as we did in case of S dot system, we first start with undamped free vibration and then gradually we include damping and then finally force and that is how we uh, complete the solution for this uh, dynamic system. Now, in this case we have again say the generalized coordinate x k of t. So, what we can do? We can propose 
a solution for this and that proposal say phi k times exponential of um, i omega t. So, that is the um, solution we propose obviously k equal to 1, 2 in this case we have 2 degrees of freedom, but it can go up to n number of degrees of freedom. Now, uh, if we write in vector notation, so x of t will be equal to phi of exponential i omega t. Right. Now, what is this phi k? This is nothing but the amplitude of the displacement along the kth generalized coordinate and that is what we actually combine and um, get this um, compact notation. So, once we have this we can also differentiate this quantity. So, what we will have on the right hand side phi times i of omega exponential i omega t. So, that is the x dot. Similarly, we can also go for x double dot of t which is equal to i omega whole square. So, this will be minus omega square phi exponential i omega Now, uh, you can easily sense what will be the next task. We have to put this expression of x um, double dot and x of t into the original equation of motion. So, um, what is the original equation of motion? m x double dot plus k x is equal to 0. Right. Now, in this equation, if I just put the expression of say first x double dot. So, what we have is minus then um, we have omega square. So, let me just modify it. So, minus omega square m plus k whole multiplied by phi exponential i omega t is equal to 0. Now, um, if we take phi inside, obviously, we can further um, rewrite this. So, it will be um, minus omega square m phi plus k phi times exponential i omega t equal to 0. Now, uh, this quantity exponential of i omega t, this is not equal to 0 because uh, then we are uh, looking at uh, trivial case. So, what we have is k times phi is equal to omega square m times phi. So, that is the condition what we get and uh, you can easily tell that this is nothing but a eigen value problem. Right. So, uh, that is the first thing we have identified. Um, it is exactly same what we did in case of uh, SDOF system. The only difference here in this case we have a matrix equation. So, accordingly we have to treat this equation. Now, um, we can uh, rewrite this equation uh, into a more compact form. So, it will be k minus omega square m times phi is equal to 0. Okay. Now, uh, obviously, uh, if we multiply both side of this equation with uh, this inverse of this third bracketed term. So, that means, uh, pre multiply by k minus omega square m inverse of k minus omega square m 
times phi this will be equal to 0. However, because we multiply uh, the inverse of this third bracketed term, obviously we can easily tell that what will be this quantity this is nothing but i identity matrix. So, in other words what we get is i times phi is equal to 0. So, what does it mean? It means that if k minus k is capital minus omega square m inverse of this quantity exists, then we have a trivial solution phi equal to 0. Or in other words, um, for our case when this phi is not equal to 0 because we are not looking for a trivial solution. So, what we have is uh, the determinant minus k, k capital minus m omega square or omega square m mod of this is equal to 0 because in that case only the inverse will not exist. So, that leads to the characteristic equation. So, this leads to the characteristic equation. Now, once we solve this if you carefully note this equation once we solve this what we will get omega square is equal to what are the values because at the at the beginning of the problem statement we define stiffness and mass at each uh, story or in this case at each degrees of freedom. Then we know capital K and capital M the only unknown is omega square. So, if we take mod of this quantity and then uh, determinant and then obviously, it will be a function of omega square and if you solve we will get these are the Eigen values. Right. Now, from that we can find out easily what is omega and this is uh, the square root of the omega square that we have already identified as Eigen values and this is the natural frequency of the system. So, mm, we get this as the natural frequency of the system and then uh, for each natural frequency if we again come back to this equation each natural frequency we can find out the Eigen vector. So, again if we consider k minus omega square m times phi is equal to 0. In this equation if you put this uh, value of omega that we get in the previous step as the Eigen values square root of Eigen values is omega and then again if we put this back in this equation we can find out solve phi that is uh, Eigen vector Eigen vector we call it mode or mode shape. So, what we get from this discussion is that the moment we start with a multi degree of freedom system, then first we uh, identify the equation of motion. This equation of motion if you carefully look at the coefficient matrices m k, uh, they are coupled. In this case the way we select the generalized coordinate our mass matrix is not coupled while the stiffness matrix it is coupled. Okay. So, to solve this set of equations first we have to uncouple and for that what we have uh, done is uh, identify the trial solution which is obviously in, uh, exponential of i omega t times some amplitude and then if we do this uh, mathematical exercise what we see that this is nothing but a Eigen value problem and then uh, because it is a Eigen value problem then we can identify the Eigen values and Eigen vectors and square root of the Eigen value is the natural frequency of the system. Now, the question is how many natural frequency we will get if you carefully notice this equation you will have 
as many degrees of freedom in the system. So, for this system we have 2 degrees of freedom. So, if we set up the eigenvalue problem, then we will see we will have 2 roots for omega square and uh, if we take the square root of that, we will get the omega. So, we will get 2 natural frequency. We will solve an example in a minute uh, and then the, this uh, point will be further cleared. Now, once we identify the natural frequency, which is the square root of the eigenvalue, then using that information again, we can find out the eigenvector or we call it mode shape. That is the deformation corresponding to each mode. Okay. So, uh, let us consider an example and then this will be further clear. So, let us consider example. Now, we have that same Tudor system. and then m1 is equal to 10 say kg m2 is equal to 25 kg then k1 is equal to um, 100 um, this is newton power meter and then k2 is equal to 150 newton per meter. So, we have all uh, these quantities in SI unit. Now, our task is to find out the natural frequency and mode shape. So, first we form the mass matrix m is equal to we have the same system I am not drawing it uh, you already have. Uh, seen. So, mass matrix will be m 1 0 0 m 2. So, if I put the values m 1 is 10 then 0 0 25. So, that is the mass matrix. Now, if we consider stiffness matrix. So, this is nothing but k 1 plus k 2 minus k 2 minus k 2 k 2. Again, if we put the values k 1 is 100, k 2 is 150. So, the first element will be 250 minus 150. So, it is 150 minus 150 then plus 150. Okay. So, what is the characteristic equation? If you recall, this is k minus omega square m times phi is equal to 0. And uh, we will equate the determinant of this matrix k minus omega square m uh, equal to 0. Now, obviously, we set the equation. So, k is what 250 minus 150 minus 150 then 150. So, that is the k matrix minus omega square mass matrix this is uh, 10 0 0 25 and then determinant of this is equal to 0. So, ultimately what we get 250 minus omega square times 10 then minus 150 minus 150 then 150 minus omega square times 25 determinant of that equal to 0. Okay, so, <coughs> you can easily <coughs> take the determinant and develop the equation of motion, uh, sorry, uh, the characteristic equation in terms of omega square, which I am not doing. Uh, so, uh, that I leave it as an exercise for you. So, find out the characteristic equation in terms of omega square 
and the solution I will give you here. So, omega square uh, will be 2.0743 and then 28.9257. Please complete this exercise. So, what we have again you see uh, two solutions for omega square. And the moment we do that, we can identify the natural frequency which will be square root of this quantity. So, it will be 1.4402 and then the second natural frequency will be 5.3783. So, that is the two natural frequencies we have for this system. Now, one by one, if we put this values in the original equation here, so we can find out the mode shapes phi. So, phi will be in this case is minus 0 0.1209, then minus 0 0.1848 and then minus 0 0.2922, then 0 0.0765. So, what we can do? We can uh, normalize this and the first element will be 1 1. So, if I take this first one to be plus 1, obviously, uh, the second uh, element will be 1 point 5285. What we do? Consider the first column, then first row we make it 1. So, second row will be this second element in the first column divided by the first element in the first column. So, that is how we get this uh, value of 1.5285. Similarly, uh, if we do the same exercise for the second column, we will have 1 and 0 0.2618. So, that is the mode shape. Now, um, just imagine if it is a two storied building. So, obviously, we have say two story here. And then if you draw the first mode shape for that in along the x 1, we have a deformation of say 1. So, this point goes here. So, this um, is 1.0. And if it goes uh, by amount of 1, the second story will be at 1.5. So, this is here it will be 1.5. So, 1.5285. Now, if I join this, I will get the deformed mode shape along the first mode. Okay. So, that is the first mode. Now, <coughs> if we draw the second mode, um, obviously, you can um, in the first mode also. So, this is uh, mode 1. Now, we have drawn in the positive side also, it can go to the other side, but the point to be noted both of them are positive here, right. That means, when it will go to the negative side, both of them will have the negative side and the same amplitude, it will be minus 1, minus 1 1.5285. And as we progress, you will see, uh, there is no phase difference uh, 
when it is under motion at first and second story when they vibrate in mode. So, that will come at later stage, but for the time being the point to be noted here is in the mode shape 1, uh, 2 stories will have same sign both of them are positive or if it is a negative both of them are negative. Now, when we go to the second mode we can again uh, draw this for that um, I draw it on the other vertical face. So, if the first story deforms by a amount of say 1 then second story will deform by a amount of, so this amount is 0 0.2618. So, the second mode shape will be like this. So, this is my mode 2. So, the point to be noted here in the second mode one is positive another is actually negative see the way it is drawn another one is negative here right. So, if it goes the other side obviously, first story will have minus 1 and in that case mode 2 will have second story uh, with plus 0.2618. So, the sign will interchange. Uh, when we will go to um, the last module of this course, we will use some software and then we will animate this mode shape and then we will see how these modes vibrate and again we will come back to this same example. So, we have defined the multi degree of freedom system, then for that we have derived the equation of motion. Then uh, next thing we do is uh, develop the equation of motion in matrix form and then uh, start with a trial solution for the free vibration case obviously, undamped free vibration case and that is how we derive the natural frequency. In this case the matrix equation gives us the eigenvalue problem and then the moment we solve the eigenvalue square root of the eigenvalue will give us the natural frequency. And, uh, once we put that natural frequency back again in the characteristic equation, we get the mode shapes and uh, the mode shapes also how does it look like you can see uh, on your screen in different modes the system will vibrate in a different way, but uh, this uh, mode shapes tells us the modal vibration and as we progress in this course we will see that using this uh, modal vibration we can decouple the system and then um, if you have n degrees of freedom that means n governing equation of motions which are coupled then using this uh, eigen analysis we can decouple them and then we will develop n single degree of freedom system and we will solve them and then again uh, find out the coupled solution in the original generalized coordinate system. So, that we will do in the next class. With that, let us close here. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.